So I am Tongan. I migrated to New Zealand when I was 12 years old and I came here because Tonga had um, riots in the education system at the time. So my parents decided that um, they wanted us to obviously continue to go to school because we hadn't been to school for like two, three months. Um, so they made the decision to send us to boarding school here. And um, so I've always kind of had it instilled in me how important education is and went to school and then went off, off to university and I have three degrees. I've got a Bachelor of Law, a Bachelor of Arts and a Master of Laws. I was born in Tongham and my family still live in Tonga and we try to go as often as we can back to Tonga and um, go to the outer islands and visit everywhere like my everything that we know is back in Tonga aside from the fact that obviously now we have a dual duo identity and living in New Zealand and being Kiwi as well so I, I would say that I'm rooted in the culture but probably my version of it because as people who live in New Zealand or overseas know being Pacific and having a cultural identity can be a challenge. My dad's side of the family is um, like they're very invested in, in, in education and my auntie actually studied law and then my brother went on to study law. And so just growing up, I had those two people to look up to and I do really value their opinions because they're people that I really respect. And so I always had them to kind of look up to to, to show me that it was something that I could do. Because again, I didn't know any other Pacific lawyers growing up. And you know, all the lawyers that I did know, they were all white male. And so it wasn't something that I naturally thought that I was going to be. When I was representing defendants who um, overwhelmingly were brown people, they almost didn't have faith in us to represent them. And so it was the opposite of what you would think it was. You know, would walk in and they'd be like, I want a real lawyer. And there was, you know, there have been countless times that there's been junior male white lawyers who had walked past and they'd rather them represent them simply because of how they look. And so I think that was challenging. Fashion icons, I've like been so lucky because I've grown up with really like confident, beautiful women. Like my auntie Carrie was in Miss World. I think she was the last Tongan to attend this world. She was with Halle Berry, which was really cool. But um, she had just this incredible sense of style that is coming back today. And that's when you know something is just so iconic, is that it just stands the test of time. And my mom was really similar. I think for my mom, beyond her clothes, it was just the way that she wore them. Like she just owned it. And I think that that's what matters the most. It's not really what you wear, it's how you wear it and how you feel about wearing those, like how those clothes make you feel. I think that we should, instead of embracing Pacific women for being a particular type, we should be embracing them for who they are and what they have to offer. And the amazing thing is, is that through social media, we're seeing Pacific women embrace their bodies, their sexualities, um, their, you know, their, their modesty, like they, they have changed the, the, the way that the conversation is behind modesty and they're really embracing their bodies and like that to me is a beautiful thing. Culture isn't something that is meant to stay stagnant, it's always changing and it's changing with people. People are the ones who are changing culture. Okay, so now we're just gonna go out to my workout and I'll see you there. Hi, so we're here at my cousin's house. We're about to do a workout. We normally do a family workout twice a week and this is AJ. He hey. normally takes the workout for us because we rely on his expertise. I think they just like listening to me to help torture them. But, it, <laughs> yeah. but it's fun. If they let me allow me, I'll, I'm happy to do it. Stimulus for today. I want you to sort of aim to finish one round in between this time frame. Work-life balance is really important for me because obviously if one thing overwhelms me, then it just throws everything off. And wor so working out is a really good way for me to just clear my mind, spend time with family and just get physically fit. And I find that like sweating out the day really helps me. So yeah, it's something that I always try to prioritize, especially with my schedule. So if I'm really busy in the day, then I try to like have my schedule really clear in the evening so that I can work out and do what I do.
A piece of advice that I'd give to young Pacific people, especially if they haven't seen someone who looks like them or is like them in a particular industry, doesn't matter what it is, is that the reason they haven't seen them is because it's waiting, they're waiting for you. It always starts with one person, like they didn't just happen overnight. And so it's a sign that it's for you. You have to be the point of difference. You have to make that change. And so my one advice is to always just like as cheesy as it is, like follow your dreams, follow the passion that is in your heart and don't listen to anyone.